Well, got something very interesting here. James White, once again, failing to use proper exegesis when he's dealing with scriptures. That uh, clearly make a big issue for Calvinism. Because here's the problem with Calvinism. You don't become a Calvinist by just reading the Bible alone. You become a Calvinist by being exposed to other Calvinist interpretations. Like you have to be under a Calvinist theologian and expose their interpretation to find Calvinism in the scriptures. You know, James White talks about, you know, oh, we, we uh, emphasize tota scriptura, which is Latin for totality of scripture. Uh, if he actually, you know, he can say he does that, but putting it into practice is a whole other issue. Because if he actually put it into practice, he would not be a Calvinist whatsoever. Uh, Calvinism is utterly inconsistent with the totality of scripture. And they use eisegesis. They can't just simply approach the scriptures at face value. They have to read their own theology into it. And the verses that very clearly contradict, they have to somehow twist it and just explain it away. And usually they fail miserably at doing that. And Genesis 6, verses 5 to 6, is one such example of a scripture that explicitly shows sin is not the will of God. And you're going to see James White just fumbling all over himself to explain it away. And he just uses the complete, uh, you know, just a great example of Calvinistic eisegesis. Okay, check this out. The term Nacham, when it says repented, that does not mean God went, oh man, I blew it. Now for an open theist, I guess they, they actually have a view of God where God is so reckless and so foolish that he could create creatures that all of a sudden start spewing out all this evil, and God just goes, oh, no, never saw this coming. Oh, goodness, what, what am I going to do? Oh, it, it repents me that I made man. Notice how James White just totally fails to address the point, builds up this false straw man of, and by the way, I'm not an open, I'm not a uh, open theist. Uh, I do agree with some aspects of open theism that that the future is partly open. I could show some scriptures on that. I'll, I'll probably do a video on that at some time in the future. But uh, James White just makes it seem like, oh, you know, open theist, which I'm not an open theist per se, but. He builds up this false trauma. See, notice how he's not really taking it at face value. He's unable to, you know? Basically, he, he, he kind of mockingly says, you know, oh, they think that God is just, oh man, I repent, I made mankind. Um, it's what the verse says. God repented at mankind's wickedness. You know what that problem, you know what that means? Um, mankind's wickedness was not God's plan. But you see, in Calvinism, they think everything happens by the will of God, including sin. So how do you explain a verse where God is repenting at the wickedness of mankind? Well, you just don't. You simply tiptoe around it, you know, tiptoeing through the tulips, like a good Calvinist. You tiptoe around it and just basically build up a false straw man and you answer it without really answering it. You know, they'll explain it as anthropomorphic or, you know, all this other stuff because they can't just take it at face value due to their pre-commitment to their Calvinistic theology. You know, I mean, if you just read the verse, you know, it repented to the Lord that he made mankind. Why? Because it was not his plan that they become so wicked. But the God of Calvinism actually causes sin. And the God of Calvinism actually prefers sin over holiness. So when they approach these scriptures, you, James White did the same thing with Jeremiah 19 verse 5. Another explicit scripture showing sin is not the will of God. He just tiptoes around it and doesn't actually really address it. You know, he says a whole lot without really saying anything at all. You know, why? Because of a pre-commitment to a man-made philosophy. They'll take isolated examples where God is incorporating the evil intentions of men into his plan, and they will just illogically, arbitrarily, fallaciously, and just absurdly argue that this proves all sin is the will of God. You know, even though the scriptures very clearly show otherwise. I mean, Galatians 2, 17-18... You know, is Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. James 1, 13 down to verse 17. Another explicit scripture on the matter, Ecclesiastes 7, verse 20 down to verse 29. They take verse 20 out of context, but they don't realize that uh, 20, verse 25 and verse 27 show that the sin is actually our own fault because they take that out of context to, to try to prove total inability. Uh, you know, there's other scriptures like Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. You know, everything that, you know, show, it shows that everything that God makes is good. Uh, other scriptures like Jeremiah 19 verse 5, Jeremiah 7 31, Jeremiah 32 verse 35, you know, show that when Israel was sacrificing their babies, God said, you know, they did that, you know, neither came it into my mind. They did that which I commanded not, paraphrasing, of course. Uh, many other scriptures too. They can't just take this at face value because it goes against their hardcore determinism. So you see James White, you know, explaining the text without really actually explaining it. 
He just simply asserts his own theology into the text like a tip, like just typical Calvinistic eisegesis. So uh, I wanted to show you guys that. I've done videos showing in the past like that the scriptures explicitly refute this idea that God causes sin, and in fact, explicitly refute the idea that everything is caused by God. Hosea 8, 4, Isaiah 30, verse 1, Isaiah 54, verse 15, Zechariah 1, 15, Galatians 5, verse 6 to 8, Galatians 1, verse 6 to 9, Galatians 2, verse 17 to 18, James 1, 13, 1 Corinthians 10, 14, I mean, on and on it goes. Uh, determinism is a Gnostic heresy, and it has no scriptural support whatsoever. You know, because that's another thing too. Calvinists love to claim that they're the historic faith or the historic biblical interpretation when they're not. They can't find anybody before Augustine who taught these heresies. You know, they're they're simply a Gnostic, a Gnostic offshoot. Right? They're, they're a Gnostic heresy that was brought in by Augustine and spread by Luther and Calvin. You know, 300 years after, you know, the days the, the uh, days of the apostles. So I could say a whole lot more on that, but not gonna. Don't be deceived by Calvinism and don't be deceived by their they're gods of philosophy like James White. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.